thought we could have a little fun in the kitchen today. Uh, my name's Melanie Williams, and I'm the Kidzium Lady, as some of you know. And the last time your kiddos at Grenada Elementary School came to the Kidzium, they got to taste naan bread. So today, I thought that we could do a little lesson about that. Uh, so what you need for naan bread, you may have the ingredients at home. If not, um, you can get them at your local grocery store for sure. To start off, you need some warm water and some yeast, sugar, Greek yogurt. I've always used the plain. I don't know what'll happen if you use a, a flavored kind. You need plain flour. You need some garlic powder and some salt and oil. So we're gonna start out today talking about our yeast, and this is just a little fun fact about yeast. Uh, the Fleischmann Company actually uh, developed this dry yeast back in World War II, so our soldiers would have a way to make bread while they were serving in the military. So we're gonna do two things with this yeast today. Each package of yeast contains um, a fourth of an ounce, and that's <clears throat> um, just about two teaspoons full. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna open up two of these because we need half an ounce for our bread. And I'm gonna pour that in there. And I'm gonna get another one. Always shake the package down because there's some at the top and that way it'll help you not make such a big mess. Although I'm really good at making messes. My family and the kids and ladies will tell you that. And my mom, my mom always said I was really good at making messes. So we're gonna do that, but also in a minute, we're going to do a little experiment with the yeast to show you how it works. So I'm gonna take one more package of yeast and open it up. I took a bottle and emptied it. And now I'm gonna pour this yeast in this bottle. Now, <clears throat> if you'll check out the yeast, it's a little bitty, looks like little seeds, but it's not a seed. What we're gonna do is we are gonna add some sugar to it. And that sugar and warm water, make sure your water's warm, will activate the yeast and get it to where it will help your bread rise. Now, when we activate it, you're gonna see some bubbles in it. They call that in bread making um, blossoming, kind of like a flower, you know, when it blooms and buds out. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna take um, one cup of this warm water and I'm gonna pour it in here. And I'm gonna take two teaspoons of sugar and I don't know who that is. <laughs> so we're just gonna turn that off. So, <clears throat> I have a teaspoon and a tablespoon. Y'all check them out. The teaspoon is smaller than the tablespoon. If you're looking at a recipe and it's abbreviated, a little T is for the teaspoon and a big T, capital T, is for a tablespoon. So I'm gonna add two teaspoons of sugar and that is what we call feeding the yeast. Now, I'm also gonna add those, see, there's my first mess. Two teaspoons of sugar in my bottle. And in a minute, I'll put my water in. First, I'm gonna take a spoon and I'm gonna stir my yeast up and try and get it to dissolve. Takes a minute. And we're just gonna let that sit as soon as I get it dissolved. And in just a few minutes, you're gonna see some bubbles form and you're gonna see foam. Now, actually, the bubbles that you are seeing are caused by the water, the yeast, and the sugar mixing together, forming a chemical reaction, and it's releasing carbon dioxide. So I'm gonna pour another cup of water over here into my bottle, slowly. Hey, I told you I was really good at making messes. 
And I'm gonna set that aside and I'm gonna put my thumb over it and mix it up a little bit. And then I'm gonna take this balloon and I'm gonna place it over the top of it. Now, we're just gonna leave that and throughout our time together, we'll go back and see what happens to the bottle in this balloon. What do you think is gonna happen? Pause the video for a minute and talk about that. What do you think is gonna happen with the bottle with the yeast and the water and the sugar in it? All right, it's been about five or six minutes and if you'll notice in my bowl, the yeast and the water and the sugar have all mixed together. That has activated the yeast and the carbon dioxide bubbles are beginning to expand. And this is what we call a blooming yeast. We're ready to make our bread. And I want you to notice too, there's bubbles in our bottle over here and the balloon is starting to fill with gas. So we're gonna kind of watch that as we continue cooking. So now we've got to mix up our dry ingredients. I went on and measured them out just to help us with time. You're gonna need four and a half cups of plain flour. So there's my four and my half. And I will move that out of the way. And then you need two teaspoons of salt. So there's one and two. Now the next part's kind of up to you and what you and your family like. We like garlic at our house. The recipe actually only calls for one to two teaspoons of garlic. It all depends on how much you like it. We like it, so I'm gonna add another teaspoon to that because three teaspoons equal one tablespoon. So I'm gonna put one tablespoon of garlic in my dry mixture. So just to review, that's four and a half cups of plain flour, two teaspoons of salt, and a tablespoon of garlic powder. And you can really smell that garlic now. That's really yummy. <clears throat> Next, we need to add one cup of our plain Greek yogurt. So I'm gonna put that in there. Move that out of the way two tablespoons of oil. Now in the Kids Am Kitchen, <laughs> we experimented with several different kinds of oil and we preferred olive oil over all the others, but you can use whatever you happen to have in your kitchen. This was just what we liked the most, okay? So, I'm gonna stir that up just a little bit because next we need to add our yeast. Now, what I'm gonna do after I add my yeast is I'm gonna move over to my mixer and I'm gonna use this cool little gadget. It's a dough hook. I like to make bread, cinnamon rolls, things like that. So my mixer has this attachment, but if yours doesn't, you can just continue to mix it with a spoon by hand because your normal attachment on your mixer probably won't do it. So let's pour this yeast in here. And you guys take a few minutes to mix yours up and I'm gonna mix mine up too. All right, so I have mixed up my non-bread mix. I'm gonna take it out of my bowl. I did have to smoosh it together before. Let's see, there's still some left in the bowl to try and incorporate it. Remember our kiddos, we talked about uh, what incorporating means, mixing together. I took some wax paper and put some flour on it because we don't want it to stick. And I'm gonna knead it just a little bit more to make it into a good ball of dough. You notice when you knead, you fold the dough over and press down with what Miss Tammy and the kids in. She says the heel of your hand. She's really good at doing this. She likes to make bread. So I'm gonna do that for a few more minutes and get it looking good for us. All right, so I have my dough together, ready to let it rise. I'm gonna let it rise for about an hour. During that time, the carbon dioxide from the yeast is going to continue to release air bubbles and that's what's gonna make my bread rise. But I wanna know how much, 
So, I couldn't find a regular ruler in my house. I guess they're all in my office at school. So, I did have a yardstick. So, I'm going to measure right here to see how tall it is. Looks like right now it's about an inch and a half or so. And if you don't have any type of ruler, don't worry about that. What I did is I went and grabbed a handy dandy little piece of paper and a pen. And I'm going to make a little mark on my paper. Kind of like we do with our kids on the wall as they grow. So I'm going to take this. I'm going to place a clean towel on top of it. It's best if you have a warm, dry place to leave it. It'll rise even more. The heat will help activate that. But if not, leave it on your counter for about an hour. We'll see you soon. Alrighty, so it's been a little bit over an hour. And as you can see, my dough has risen. Now, I'll go on and tell you, sometimes in the kids' room, when we are naked, we'll start in the morning and we'll make up our dough and we'll let it rise until lunchtime. So don't stress out if you don't have a lot of time to come back within an hour or so. It won't hurt it at all, it'll just rise because the carbon dioxide will keep um, adding bubbles and making it grow until you add your heat when you bake it. So I'm gonna use my handy dandy pizza cutter here and I'm gonna cut mine in half. You can also just use a knife to do that. And then, I'm going to cut it into fourths. Remember, that means I had a hole, and now I have four pieces. And then I'm going to cut it again. Let's see what I get this time. So, I'm going to cut each fourth into a half of that. So, how many total pieces do you think I'll have then? Let's count. One, two, three, four. Five, six, seven, eight. Now I'm gonna leave mine at this, but you can actually cut those again to make them smaller. I wonder what fraction that would be. Hmm. Work on that and let me know if you come up with the answer. Now I'm gonna take just one of these triangles and I'm gonna put a little bit of flour on it. <clears throat> this is Miss Terrace's favorite part of this project. She usually is the one that rolls out the dough, and Miss Tan usually is the one who cooks it. Now behind me on my stove, I have a pan with a little bit of olive oil in it. It's already heated up. I'm gonna roll this out fairly thin. it. You can see my oil is already pretty hot. I'm going to turn it down just a little bit. Now as it bubbles up, you're going to see some bubbles appear in the bread as well. Super cool. Just takes uh, about a minute or so. So we're going to let that side bubble up. And then I'm gonna flip it over and let that side cook. And then I'm just gonna pick it up and place it over here. I'd actually say that I probably used a little bit too much oil, more than we normally use in the kids' am, but it still looks super yummy. Now, all you have to do is repeat that process over and over again until all your bread is done. I'm gonna finish up cooking these tonight for supper. My family's gonna take this naan bread and add all our favorite pizza toppings to it, place it under the broiler for a few minutes and have a delicious homemade pizza. You can eat it with hummus or just by itself, but it is absolutely delicious. Hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you again soon.